Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is, I, I realize that my, my project, it's about five heads long. It's one, two, three, four, five. Now, the beginning thing is, right, the first step is I gotta establish how big of a head I need then, right? So if I have a piece of clay and I decide that the head is gonna be as big as my fist, that's gonna be a big old project. So just thinking about that basic concept will help lead your success in this project. All right, so I'm starting from the very beginning here. I'm gonna split up my clay and my initial directions was to split your clay up and use about three and a half to four and a half pieces of clay. All right, so I'm gonna shoot for a three and a half fist of clay. So here I am, I'm cutting it. Ooh, it's still soft. There we go. Got my blocks. And then I pull it towards me. There we go. All right, here we are. I have four blocks of clay. They're somewhat the same, um, the same width, dimension all the way around. Let me just move my camera. There we go. But I need about three and a half. So I have one fist, right? So I'll set that aside. And I'm comparing it. Another fist. You can see just roughly the same size. Another one. But here we go, I have one more right here. And I'm just gonna split this one in half because I'm gonna go three and a half. Really, you could go with four, like four blocks of clay, that's fine. Now, because you, you are starting off with, you know, more clay, three and a half to four and a half times more clay than previously done um, for your pinch pot, you only started out with one pinch pot, then um, you know, you got to have a way to combine all of these things. Now, do you guys know, if you watch the video, you, you, you understand that, that there's a process that is used to combine all this clay. How do I combine all this clay, you guys? Does, does anyone know? Is it uh, slip and score something? Oh yeah, we could slip and score, but um, for this case, it's a lot of clay. Uh, but Ryan, thank you for using that prior knowledge. Uh, you could do it, but it would be ineffective just because we, we got too many pieces of clay here. All right, but I appreciate it. Anyone else? It's usually the first step, right? If you've taken notes, it's like one of the first steps. How do I combine this clay? I think you know. Was it the wedge or something? Yes, you gotta wedge your clay, all right? So thank you, Ryan. And if you haven't taken notes, you guys, it's really important. Take those notes because it'll, have it, it'll give you understanding. So what we wanna do, I have this extra piece of clay, I'm just gonna set it aside. I'm not gonna wedge it together. And what I'll do to wedge my clay is I'll actually combine it, all right? And when I'm doing this, I'm usually standing up. You can't see me stand up, but I'm actually standing up now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first combine the clay, right, just like this. And then what I'll do is I'll use these parts of my hands right here. Okay, I'm pointing at it. It's part of my thumb, and it's this part here on the base of my palm there. And I'm just gonna push it down. You can see my shoulder, right? I actually have one left, my left foot is forward, my right foot is back, and I'm pushing down on the clay, and this is what it looks like. All right, when you wedge your clay, if I put two dots right there, it looks like there's somewhat like a, a face or a mask. But I push down and I'm combining that clay. All right, I'll do that about three, four times. And then I'll leave it aside. I know it doesn't look pretty, but I'm going to leave it aside. Now I'm going to combine these two pieces of clay right here. And I'm going to wedge. Now what wedging does is that it does make your clay wholesome. And it also gets rid of air bubbles, especially when you're combining clay. It gets rid of air bubbles. Now I have two pieces of clay, and I need to form this into a cylinder eventually. So I'm going to combine these two. I'm just going to go down. And I'm doing this softly because I'm really trying not to um, ruin my camera motion. Um, I don't want to introduce too much but at home you could be a little bit more rough but my table is connected to a camera and I don't want to introduce vibration 
So if you want to wedge a little bit faster, that's good. And then what I'll begin to do is actually use my hand And you guys could do this along with me too. So if you want to wedge, your studio is set up, right? Annalise is like, I thought you said that we were just watching first. Yeah, that was through when I was going over grades and that whole thing about Google Classroom. But now we're in studio, you guys could actually do this part. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, get this clay. I mean, you could roll it, don't do this. This will not change the shape of clay efficiently. Like that does nothing. So what I'm actually doing is just shaping the clay all the way around into a cylinder. I'm gonna flatten the sides. And what I'll do is, after I get about the length of my hand, right? If I go just like that, it's about the same width. It's pretty thick, right? It's as thick as my fist, so you guys can see the dimension there. What we're gonna do is actually use this here and we know that we got to split the clay up into multiple parts. In the video, I illustrate further how to split the clay up, and that's what I'm going over. So on this first part, what I'm really aiming at, my first cut, is an estimation. Okay, I'm going to estimate how much I'm cutting here based on how big I want my head to be. Now, what I would recommend that you guys do is estimate about half a fist when you split up your clay. All right? So I think that if I have, if I cut this much of clay, right, right here, which is not a lot, I'm gonna end up with about half a fist. And let's see if that's true. So if I put my clay into the general shape, okay, of this rhino head, now I'm not trying to sculpt it and put eyes on, but if I go, okay, like, okay, that's roughly about half a fist. I'm happy there, okay? That was a good estimation. And so what I'm gonna do next is I know that I need to get, and, and, and um, you know, I, I wanna make sure that I have enough for the body, but I also need to make sure that I have enough for the legs, all right? So for the legs, um, I have this piece here on one side. It looks like a certain shape, I outlined it. I have this other shape here, and the same thing repeats on the other side, which we don't see all of it, we only see part of it. So I know that I need to have enough clay for that. So, but what I wanna make sure is I outline this big part right here, okay? And how many heads is that? It's like one, two, three, four. That's four heads, okay? So using the same amount of cuts that I had, I'm just gonna line up my wire here and I'll estimate, okay, like I cut about that much clay for about half a fist, right? And that gave me one head unit two, three, four. Now this clay right here that I just split, right, this clay right here, that's gonna be enough for the body. So I have enough for the head, this is enough for the body. Even though it's not the shape that I want it to be right now, I know it's gonna be enough. And then for the rest of this clay, I'm gonna actually split it up for the legs, all right? So I'm gonna make an observation. On my animal, the front legs, right, are bigger because of the thigh can when compared to the hind legs, all right? So the legs on the back are smaller than the ones on the front. And so I wanna make sure that I split this up in a way where there are four pieces, but I'm gonna equally split it up first. As you can see, I try to do half and half, right? But then when I split it one more time, one side is gonna be bigger than the other, all right? So I'm gonna go, Instead of a 50-50, I want to go like 60-40, all right? And that'll give me, as you can see here, this is a little bit bigger. This is going to be for the front legs. The smaller ones are going to be for the hind legs. All right, now from here, what I want to do next is really make sure that I begin to shape this into its general shape. Now, my goal today is to go back to this photo and make sure that we are in the ratio, right? So I'm gonna work for length, all right? I wanna make sure that I am about one, and then I got one, two, three, four, okay? 
four heads long for the body. And this is not combined yet. I'm not combining today. The animal project is not going to be standing up today. And the next time I see you won't be until Wednesday next week. So what you should have, if you didn't get started with clay, or maybe let's say you didn't set up your studio yet, you're not cutting your clay, what you want to make sure that you do is that by we by the time we begin on Friday, that your clay is ready to be slip and scored together. All right, and so we're actually gonna handle all the general shapes. Now, like I said, we're gonna need to take this clay now and go ahead and begin to shape it, all right? Now, I can just manipulate the clay. It'll get longer by just, you could squeeze it, right? But the thing with squeezing is uh, I end up putting all these like fingerprints on my clay and I don't necessarily like that. So I just take my strong hand, right? And I actually just start to push this clay towards the base of my palm. This part right here will actually introduce an indent on my clay and that's gonna be used here as it curves on the rib cage of my animal. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way around. Also, if I take my clay here and then just push it, right, or pull it, actually, it's a pulling motion. You pull the clay, and I keep my hand here. It's actually lengthening my clay, right? It's getting longer and longer. And then all I want to do is just make sure that I look at my head unit, and I said that according to the head, the length of the body should be about four times the width of the head. I have one, two, three. This needs to get longer. So I'm going to go ahead and continue manipulating this clay until it gets longer. And like I said, doing this does not change the shape. All right, so you're going to have to stretch your clay longer. You could also hit it on the table, right? But it shakes my camera, so I don't like doing that. You could try that at home if you have a sturdy working surface. All right, and just kind of line it up. One, two three. We got three and a half. All right, we're almost there. I'm going to lengthen one part. All right, I think that's about the size that we're looking for there. All right, one, two, three, four. Boom. I have a little bit more, right, extra right here. And what I'll do with that, okay, this is going to be the back side, and as you can see here, it looks a bit like, you know, concave or convex, so I'm just going to fill that in. I'm going to fill that in. Fill it in, get around, and I can begin to look at my shape here. Look at my shape, and I notice that this part here is definitely thicker and it gets more narrow as it goes towards the rear. All right, so using my clay, um, this is the profile view here of what I have. It's a little bit thicker here. The rhino head's gonna be right here, right? There's gonna be a bit of a neck that gets added on there. I'm good for now, okay? Because I know that it's bigger here and it does get narrow. I'm not gonna put too much work into this yet because all I'm doing is putting the, the pieces of clay after I cut into its general shapes. Now, when you start to begin the legs, this, this accounts for um, a lot of different animals, I would say except for birds. Unless you have a bird, um, the shapes of legs are a bit different. But when I look at shapes of legs, I include the thigh, not just the part that sticks out, right? I, I look at the whole thing. And so when I look at this, I go, okay, that kind of reminds me of a fried chicken leg. All right, so what I'll do is I begin to visualize that. I'm gonna take my bigger pieces of clay and I'm gonna begin to squeeze one part of it. All right, so I'll just put it on my hand just like this and I'll begin to squeeze it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna start to create that leg, all right? I also wanna create the thigh. So, what I'm visualizing and I'm putting, you know, my, my imagination to this is that I'm looking at this, but also in my brain, my, I'm telling you my cognition, what's going on in my brain. I'm trying to make this look like a piece of fried chicken, all right, a drumstick, right? 
There you go, that's a general shape. And then what I'll do is I'll leave it just like that. I'm not done with it, right? It's not detailed, it doesn't have that unique shape of the leg yet. But I'm not concerned about all those angles just yet because the, the rhino is not standing up, all right? The clay is still very wet. Now at this point, if your hands get really dirty, as you can see, mine are getting kind of dry. I'll go ahead and um, just take a water bottle, moisten my hands a bit so my clay doesn't dry up, all right? We want our clay to be flexible. We want it to be malleable. All right, I'll take my next piece of clay. I'm going to do the same thing and try to get the same shape. And what I'll do is go through the same process. I'll take part of it, begin squeezing the leg, and then create the fried chicken, fried chicken drumstick, all right? And just compare it and say, hey, okay, like, what does it look like? Does it compare, does it look the same? I think I have a little bit more clay on this one. So I'm just gonna remove that clay, right? I, I just removed that clay, I just pinched it off. I'm gonna put it with my extra clay which I'll put it back in my bag later. And I wanna get these about the same size, roughly the same size, all right? Now, am I concerned about accuracy right now in terms of the shape or form? I'm not. I'm gonna leave it just like this. And what I'll do, if I look at the shape here, it's definitely not as round, right? So if I put this on, those legs are gonna be super thick. So what I do wanna do is actually flatten it. So I'll just flatten it on one side. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to leave one side where it has shape, but on one side here, I am going to flatten it. And I'll do the same thing for the other. There we go. And I'll just put that aside. That will get bagged up. And then I have the rear that I'm working with here. Rear legs, you're gonna go through the same exact process. Squeeze it. Fried chicken shape. And then leave it there, don't flatten it yet. Do the same thing here with the other piece of clay. Size it up. Okay, they're roughly the same. And then flatten on one side, flatten on the other. Make those legs more rounded. Make it more rounded. And then go back here and make it more rounded. We don't want the inside part to be flat of that leg. This is flat because it's gonna be eventually attached to the body here that we have, all right? That's gonna attach there. That makes it easier, a little bit easier to slip and score it. Go back here, make the legs rounded. And we can manipulate that shape more accurately later. Our later will be Wednesday next week. Now, you have more clay, probably more clay than you can fit on the tile, all right? So at this stage here, um, what we want to do is actually begin preparing this for cleanup, all right? so. Um, what I recommend, if you have a tile, you, you could surely store it on there for now, but when you, you find some time, if you have a board, right, or maybe like you have an old binder that you don't use, that works too. It doesn't have to be wood. I just have a bunch of wood in the class. Um, you can use the same bag. If you need to use multiple bags, that's okay too. But when you're storing your work, Right? What's most important, because we're not combining any of this clay yet on the first day. All right, we just wanna make sure that all the pieces of clay are split apart into their unique ratios, right? Each animal is gonna be gonna vary. And what we wanna do is, with our bags, you're gonna spray it a couple times. All right, my spray bottle doesn't work that great, so I sprayed it three times, all right? I'm gonna put the body in there. I don't know if I'm on camera still. Put the body in there. All right, spray it a little bit more. I'll put my other pieces of clay in there. 
and I'm just using one bag. Head, front legs, with the front legs. And you don't want to pile the pieces of clay on top of one another. You just want to lay them flat. And then from there, we'll go to the next step next week. All right, take all the air out, getting all the air out. And that just ensures that, you know, the moisture is gonna be locked in. You don't have air, which really is oxygen, that is going to harden your piece. And then just make sure that, you know, with the opening of the bag, I'm just tucking it in between pieces of clay so that it's locked in, all right? I don't have any holes on my bag. If you do, you can get masking tape and actually just put it um, over the hole. If you have a garbage bag and you feel more comfortable using a garbage bag for your piece um, to, to bag it up, you could do that for this project because it ends up being bigger. Eventually, you will need a garbage bag, um, but building, when you first build it, you could use that same exact bag that um, you know, used for your pinch pot. I'll, I'll eventually upgrade to a bigger bag. So this weekend, make sure you guys secure a garbage bag. That works really well for the animal project because once we put our project together and it ends up being a lot bigger, this small bag will not work anymore. But initially, you could start off with it, all right?